In If Books Could Talk, we've been looking at the historic traces, the size, the marginalia, the chapter headings, the handwritten notes, and all of the clues that tell us about the history of a manuscript, a book, about where it's been, about the people who've used it. Today, we're looking at a text that was extremely common in the Middle Ages and is still extremely common today, and asking these two manuscript Bible leaves, how are you similar and how are you different from the Bibles that are printed today? So Heather, what can you tell us about these two manuscript Bible leaves? Well, this is a leaf from 1150 and it was made in France. And you can see up here that it has an RE at the top. That's followed on the opposite by a GUM, which means it's from the Book of Kings. Kind of cool. And this one over here is a leaf from 1240. We know it's from at least between 1238 and 1252 because we know it came from William de Braille's workshop in Oxford in England. And you can see up here it has an M-A-C-H, uh, which means that it's from the Book of Maccabees. So we know quite a lot about these leaves to start with, more than in some of our other episodes. Absolutely. But let's have a look at what they can tell us about how they might be different or the same as a modern Bible today. Great. What do you notice about the margins, Colleen? Well, the margins are larger on the bottom, mm -hmm. um, a little smaller on especially one side. Mm -hmm. There's not much marginalia in there, is there? There's just this sort of one correction or insertion into it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, are we, what, what about the columns? Well, there's two columns on each page. They're exactly the same in that way. Yep, and here they're actually labeled, aren't they? Oh, yeah, there's numbers right yeah, at the top. that's cool. And what about um, the lettering, the size of the lettering? Uh, they're both pretty small, since this leaf is a little smaller overall. Right. I'd say this one is smaller than that one. But Right, okay. What about chapters? Um, well, there seems to be a heading at the top. Okay. Um, and there's a large... Um, Initial, there seems to be an initial here. And there's some Roman numerals next to them, yep. I see. Yeah, okay, those are chapters. What about verses? There are no verses. I don't think there's any verses. <laughs> there here. are no verses. I see lots of black text here, and here there is a little bit of red at the beginning of each sentence, a little bit of highlighting in red. The rubrication. The rubrication. <laughs> I love that word. What about reading aids? Well, um, I mean, there's these big divisions. Okay. Um, so we have those capitals that are decorated for reading aids. We've got the titles, as you pointed out earlier. Mm -hmm. There are these little lines here that mean something. Not quite sure what. Maybe they're highlighting a passage that the reader wanted to take note of? Yeah, and that's different from this leaf to that one. Absolutely, mm -hmm. right. And what about the folio number? Yeah, neither one has any page numbers. This one has a folio number, so that's marking the, the front and the back of a leaf, um, an older system of page numbers. Um, this one has it, but it looks like it was put in much later. I think it was put in kind of in the 20th, 21st century maybe. Mm -hmm. And then this one has no folio number, no page number. It does have the column numbers. Oh, that's these numbers here at the right, top. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So if page layout is one of the ways that we can use to compare these leaves to the page of a modern Bible, mm -hmm. I think language would be another clue. Sure. What do you see here? Well, both of these leaves are in Latin. They are in Latin. And I suspect that would be different from most of the Bibles that people are reading today. Well, we can do a little research and find out, but I suspect you're <laughs> right. The third way in which we can compare these leaves to a modern Bible is the decoration. In some mm -hmm. of the previous episodes, decoration has been really important in mm -hmm. our analysis and research. What are we seeing here? Well, uh, there actually isn't very much decoration on these leaves. Um, those big initials we yeah. pointed out, but outside yeah. of that, not much at all. I think that's really interesting. Um, I think it's time to do a little research and maybe find out why. So, Colleen, I think we did some 
really good research. Yep, and we have a modern Bible here and our historic Bible leaves, so we can look at the similarities and differences between them. Okay, let's start with those margins, columns, and the size of lettering. Okay, well, they're both in columns. Mm -hmm. They both have two columns. Yes. Uh, but the margins on this modern Bible, um, especially the bottom margin, are a little bit smaller. Yeah, a little bit smaller than what we've got in the Middle Ages. The lettering, however, kind of stays the same. It's that kind of very small sized lettering in order to fit a lot of words on one page, I think. It's, there's a lot of chapters. There is. <laughs> so we look at that, though, and we say, wow, that kind of layout. And there's a lot of similarities between this Bible and our medieval leaves. Yes. What about chapters and verses? Uh, well, the modern Bible has chapters and verses, but yes. we found the historic leaves didn't have verses. No, and these are very clearly marked. It's kind of interesting, I think, that these, where we know there's new chapters, they start with a new letter, mm -hmm. but here, where we know there's new chapters, it starts with a number, so a it number. kind of goes in hierarchical order, and it's easier to follow, I think, right? What about folio numbers, page numbers, reading aids? Okay, well, on the historic leaves, we found that they didn't have any numbers marked except these column numbers, right. and uh, much later, someone had added a folio number, right. so that front-back number. Right. But, but on the modern Bible, we have page numbers, each page with its own number. Lots of page numbers, yeah. yes. Here at the bottom. Yes, mm -hmm. and I think we've got more reading aids here than we do on these medieval leaves because we've got things like not only do we have the name of the book like we do on our medieval leaves we've got which chapter we're on on mm -hmm. that page and we've got a little summary about what is in this chapter on, on this page mm -hmm. so that's really important and then some cross references and different things add us that would guide a reader in different ways too right mm -hmm. right and those we don't see on these kinds of leaves mm -hmm. so i think while some of the page layout has transferred very nicely into the modern era, some things are very different. And I suspect that the number of reading aids in the modern Bible may have something to do with who's reading it. Let's look at language, clue number two. Sure. way in which we were looking at these two Bibles and their similarities and differences was the language. Right. These uh, historic leaves are in Latin, but right. we read the book in translation now. Right. English. This one is in English. Right. So when did the transition happen between Latin and English? Okay, well that took place a little bit later than these leaves. In about 1380, John Wycliffe, a theologian, Oxford scholar in England, decided to translate the Bible into English so that his followers could read it for themselves. This was revolutionary. And in fact, John Wycliffe, who was the leader of a group called the Lollards, was claimed to be a heretic by the Catholic Church for doing just this. However, he was a bit of a precursor for Martin Luther and the Reformation, which came a little bit later, about 100 years later, and Martin Luther as well felt that the common person, like you and I, should be able to read the Bible. And he thought that the easiest way to do that would be to put it in the language of the people who are reading it. And so for us, that's English. Mm -hmm. And this is very different than what's happening here. And I think what we see here on this page reflects a lot of who is reading this Bible. And mm -hmm. what we see here reflects a completely different audience. So what about the decoration between our medieval leaves and our modern Bible? Okay, well, I know on the modern Bible, this one from the 1950s doesn't have any illustrations at all. Right. Um, though certainly there's exceptions. Yeah. Children's Bibles or certain really expensive Bibles can mm -hmm. come with beautiful illustrations, mm -hmm. but they tend to be the exception, not the rule. Right. And I think that's exactly why these don't have illustrations, because we have to think back to pro before the Reformation, when the people that were reading these Bibles were scholars and basically clerics, people of the church. And when they were reading their Bibles, they were reading them so that they could interpret them for people like us. And they didn't really need images for that. 
Um, there were exceptions as well in the Middle Ages. Uh, there were certain Bibles that were illuminated, like these amazing Bible Moralise, moralized Bibles, but there are not a lot of copies of them, and they were for very wealthy patrons. So once again, this decoration and what you're seeing on this page has a lot to do with who's making it and who is it for, who's mm -hmm. reading it. Just like our modern ones, children's illustrated Bibles, mm -hmm. right? It's because children are reading them. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of our episode, we were wondering about how a Bible leaf from the 12th and 13th century looks different than a Bible leaf from the 20th century. And the major difference is that idea of how to read the Bible, reading aids, things that help us read the Bible. So now we have these page numbers not so apparent there. We have a very clear hierarchy of chapters. We have verses that have been put in, all for the benefit of the reader. And I think that's really interesting because that is post-Reformation. That is because you and I can sit here and we can read this Bible if we want. So we took a look at similarities and differences between these historic leaves and a Bible from the 1950s, but carry that on to today. Go to a shelf near you if you have a Bible nearby, or a library, or a bookstore, or even a hotel room, um, and take the Bible that, that's out, and see if you see some of these features carrying on through today. The interesting thing is, even if you can't read the language, a lot of the features will tell you what kind of a book you're looking at, particularly with this, this text. So see what you can find if you take a close look. What is the book telling you?